Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Um, today I want to talk about some stuff that's um, going on right now um, and it's kind of trending online and it also mirrors some experiences that I had. Um, I want to talk about a little bit more about the um, acts of racism that have been going on at BYU. Um, it seems to be a recurring thing, like constantly every couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, there seems to be an apology from BYU or from staff or from the student body for a, a very racist um, uh, things that are being done um, to people of color on campus. And um, the most uh, recent one was a volleyball player was called the N-word multiple times throughout um, um, the game um, while they were playing at BYU um, every time she was serving. And throughout the whole game, um, nobody did anything. Um, Nobody stopped her, uh, stopped them um, from um, using the N-word. Um, it wasn't until after the game that BYU issued an apology and banned the, the BYU uh, um, student from, um, and, and banned them. Um, which is good, it's good, but honestly, um, it's not enough. And the reason why it's not enough is because um, these things shouldn't be happening in 2022 it shouldn't be happening uh, it shouldn't be happening at a school um that's owned by um a church and it shouldn't be run uh it shouldn't be done at a church uh, at a school that's uh the board of the directors are general authorities um th this is behavior that is being allowed and enforced from on top uh we viewed not too uh, not too long ago a couple months ago brad wilcox himself he made very um, tone-deaf comments um, about uh, blacks in the priesthood. Um, so it's very uh, obvious that um, there is a lot of ignorance and obviously discrimination not only in leadership but throughout uh, faculty and uh, the student body at BYU and throughout the church. And saying that, um, maybe I can appeal to you with some personal experiences that I had. Um, because it's one thing, um, hearing this, you know, in, in media and you're like, oh, okay, whatever it happened to this one person at BYU once. Um, no, it's a very regular thing and a very constant thing I hear from most, uh, people of color that go to BYU. And this is why people of color do not go to BYU. Um, and they, they have, and that's why, um, mo most of them, um, transfer out of BYU. Um, so it's a problem. Um, and it's a problem not even for uh, BYU as a school, but it's a problem for uh, as a church. If uh, people of color are not feeling welcome in the church, they're not going to come to church. And they're not going to uh, want to attend a church that they don't feel like uh, people value them or appreciate them or accept them for who they are. So the first experience I wanted to share was a, a instance of faculty, of racism um, by faculty. I was um, going to take the Spanish, uh, I believe it was like 321, um, which is a, like the return missionary Spanish class that you can take. And then at the end of class, um, you can uh, test out of all the other, like Spanish 100, Spanish 101, 102, and that could like boost your GPA. So that's what I want to do. Uh, I spoke Spanish, I speak Spanish from growing up, so there, I was wondering like how that would work with me because I am uh, bilingual, I grew up in a Spanish-speaking household, but I did, speak, I did uh, serve a Spanish-speaking mission in Argentina. So um, I, went to, um, the, uh, I went online and I saw that if you are a native Spanish speaker, then the alternative would be to take the English speaking a language course and test out of those. I didn't feel that was very fair either also because my primary language is English. I grew up in the U.S. I went to a U.S. Uh, uh, schooling um, throughout my life um, and I graduated uh, in schooling like uh, K-12 in the U.S. Um, so uh, my English skills are definitely uh, much stronger. Speaking uh, reading, writing, much uh, stronger. So I went to the language uh, center at BYU and I explained to them, um, uh, to the staff there, uh, the admission staff there, uh, my situation. And they told me, uh, there was a man there, and he told me that I am not allowed 
to take any of the classes. And I'm not allowed to test out of any of the classes. And I was like very confused. I was like, why? And he's like, well, it's because English and Spanish are my primary language. And I was like, no, my primary language is English. And my secondary language is Spanish. I grew up uh, in a Spanish household, but I grew up speaking English my whole life with everyone else in school and everything in, in church and everything else. And he was like, no, you are uh, primary English and Spanish. You're not allowed to take any of those classes and you're prohibited from um, um, signing up for those classes. I was very angry. I was very frustrated and very angry. I did not want to speak to him anymore because once again, he's telling me what I am and what I knew. And what I knew was that my, I, my, I'm, my primary language is English and my secondary language is Spanish. Like that's always ha has been uh, in my life. And he's telling me <laughs> like exactly, he's telling me what I am and he doesn't know who I am. He, you know, this faculty member. Um, and I felt, I felt I was like, because I look who I look like, who I look, how I, I look, how I look like. Um, he was making many um, assumptions and generalizations, and I believe some some discriminatory uh, assumptions. Um, so I went to the main uh, faculty uh, student um, admissions office where they do in at, at the Wilk at BYU, and I I I I I want to meet with someone there. Uh, because I was very confused and angry and frustrated with the situation. So I met with a counselor there and I explained the situation. And he was very confused too. He said he's never heard of that. He's never heard that um, someone was prohibited from taking the language courses just because they were bilingual. And I explained to them, well, like that's what this gentleman told me. And he told me... And in his words, and I quote, this sounds like discrimination. And once again, I don't like to pull the race card. It's not something I want to do. Um, however, this gentleman, he was a white man. Even for him, it was pretty obvious that there was some discrimination happening. And I told him, yes, I, I believe that discrimination uh, has to do with part of this. Um, so he told me he was going to allow me on the system to sign up for the Spanish class and to test out of those uh, classes. Um, and I thanked him and he said, if, if I get any more issues, they will bring it up to higher uh, admin um, administration if there's any more issues. Um, so I took, I took the class, I tested out. Funny thing is I took, I got a B. I got a B in Spanish. Once again, Spanish is not my primary language. I'm not good with conjugating, okay? So, um, so yeah, once again, that's one experience from faculty that I had, um, unfortunately, and that's when I knew, like, hey, people are judging me by the way I look like, literally. And I, I've known this my whole life, but it was uh, sad to uh, see that at BYU and from staff. Um, the second experience, um, which what came from the student body, um, it's going to be very, honestly, pretty disturbing. Um, and even me retelling the story bothers me a lot. Um, I was at uh, the fields, the, the, the playing fields at BYU, because they were doing Ultimate Frisbee, uh, Ultimate Frisbee tournament. And I was going there to support uh, one of my friends who played uh, for one of the teams. Once again, I went one evening to support my friend and, um, you know, I sit down in the field and um, I, um, the team goes, uh, both teams go out to the field and it's very common, well, it was like their tradition to, for each team to like yell their name, you know, like chant their name right before the game started. Um, so, or it was at, yeah. Yeah, they would just chant their name. And um, so my, my friend's team, I don't remember their name, they got in a huddle and they started chanting whatever their name was. And then the other team came up to the field and they started chanting their team name. 
and their team name was White Power. Um, so what I see next is a group of white men, uh, young men on the field, yelling, chanting White Power in front of an audience. So they're yelling, white power, white power, white power, white power. And I'm from Florida. I'm from Southern Florida. Um, the few times I've heard the phrase white power, where it came from um, people who came from um, the Confederate like uh, demographic uh, uh, groups, uh, very racist, um, usually affiliated with white power, white supremacy, uh, KKK uh, groups. Um, I couldn't believe what I was hearing or seeing. I like, I, 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 it, it, I felt it was very surreal that this was happening. And I don't do this. I'm not. I don't go out of my way to be confrontational. However, I got out of my seat and I started yelling at them. I started yelling at that team, like saying, like, what the hell are you guys doing? What are, like, what's going on? Like, why, why are you yelling that? And I, you know, I make a scene, but I think I, I, I couldn't sit down and let a group of people even if they were ignorant about the phrase, yell a KKK slogan and chant in a public forum. I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't. What if there was a, a black students there? That's literally the type of language that was used when um, black Americans were being lynched, when they were being hung in the US. Um, so I got very upset. I walk off the field and my friend who I went to see, he, he, he came to talk to me and uh, he was like, why, hey dude, what, what's wrong? Like, why are you, like, why are you freaking out? I was like, didn't you hear what they just said? And he was like, yeah, must be a joke or whatever. I was like, dude, no, look, look into the history. Look into the history of what they're saying. It's a KKK slogan, like chant, like think, like just, it doesn't take that much to like realize like how problematic and how racist that is. And especially in a public area. And I just walk home. I couldn't, I was just, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, my friend afterwards, he got, um, he, he, he came home, he was my roommate and he kind of apologized and he said like he thought about it more and he thought like oh yeah it's actually pretty problematic and I was like yeah it is and if I wasn't there nobody would have said anything nobody would have said anything no one would have done anything and that's the problem that's the problem the problem is we ask too much of members that are uh, members people of color to defend themselves from other members who will either say ignorant, discriminatory, or racist uh, things. We do, there's not enough members that are um, standing up for our uh, brothers and sisters, our black brothers and sisters, our Latino brothers and sisters, our gay brothers and sisters, our queer brothers and sisters. There's not enough. And it's too much weight. It's too much weight for so many of these of, of these members to take upon themselves and to uh, be able to defend themselves and to be able to speak up. It's too much. We're in, and the, it's easier, honestly, to leave the church. It's just easier. Um, and honestly, like I wish, I wish this wasn't a surprising thing, but it seemed once again. It seems like. This is a recurring um, thing that's happening at BYU, happening within uh, leadership in the church. And honestly, it's just, it's, it's a lot. And um, I, already, I already, I have so many um, friends that have uh, stopped going to church, have left the church. And, and, and these are, it's a very multifaceted, complex situation issue, but definitely this, how we treat 
um, the uh, our, our our brothers and sisters, uh, people of color, and ideology, different lifestyles. Like that's how we treat them. People are not feeling safe at church. They're not feeling safe at BYU. They're not feeling safe in Utah. Um, so we have to change and we have to do better. And, you know, first step is to realize, hey, what discriminatory views do I have? What discriminatory views or pre prejudice uh, views did I grow up with? What do I need to change? What do I need to be better? And then um, when you hear other, you know, when you hear anyone else say things that are a little off or a little weird or feel make you feel uncomfortable, ask them about that. Why did you say that? Can you repeat that? Um, can, I need clarification on this. Or, hey, I don't think that was nice. I don't think that, I don't think that sounds really good. You know? Be, you know? It, 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 I wish I would have had much more support uh, within the church in these things. Because it's a lot. It's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight to be carrying. And I think uh, especially members who, you know, that uh, they go to church and they want to uh, just worship together. Um, the, you don't want to worship somewhere where you don't feel safe. So, I get off my soapbox and... Um, I'm just making that final appeal. Please, like, take time. Take time to think um, about how you grew up, how, like, your beliefs. And don't don't think, like, oh, like, these are political things. Um, accepting others and loving others is not a political thing. It's a, it's a Christian thing. Christ, um, he spoke out and he elevated voices that were uh, um, uh, voices that were uh, diminished or were being silenced and um, those were the people that he reached out to constantly. Um, I thank you for listening. I hope you're having a great day. I love you and um, please be safe out there. Thanks.